Joining us now, former State Department official Christian Whiten. Today kicks off the first of two days of congressional hearings with U.S. intelligence chiefs about the new threats against U.S. national security. In this order, China, Russia, Iran. Okay, Christian, first up, China. Newsweek says China was simulating an attack on a U.S. naval carrier when it sent a record 25 warplanes into, into Taiwan's airspace. Your take on this? You know, it's an effort to intimidate Taiwan and also to test the Biden administration. Uh, you know, uh, President Trump eventually grew very disillusioned with China um, and had a significant show of force at times, and, and elements of administration were very pro-Taiwan. So, um, you know, this is China basically seeing what they can get away with. And, you know, it's very clear that they are the sort of peak threat to the United States. Yeah. China trying to get away with stuff in Taiwan. I mean, the Teddy Roosevelt carrier strike group is in the Philippines. You know, so there's that. That's happening. And then the FBI director, Christopher Wray, says the FBI is opening a new investigation into China, you know, every 10 hours. Let's move on to Moscow. Russia, massive troop buildup on Ukraine's borders. What is with, you know, now we're hearing Russia is launching live fire drills in the Black Sea, three missile ships, a frigate, and a minesweeper. I mean, the Pentagon's considering sending two Navy ships there to support Ukraine. What do you say to this? You know, I think Putin, again, is probably this, you know, some think that this massing of troops would be a prelude to invasion of Ukraine. I think more likely Putin is intimidating Ukraine and also, again, sending a message to Washington. President Biden made the diplomatic sort of, uh, I would say, mistake of calling Vladimir Putin a killer. He may be one, but you just don't really call um, the heads of major powers, things like that. And Putin is probably demonstrating that he can cause problems on the periphery of Russia really at any time he wants. And there's very very uh, a limit to what we can do. There's a limit to the amount of firepower we can put in the Black Sea due to a treaty that prohibits putting capital ships in unless you're a, a country that borders the Black Sea. Um, and, you know, really, there's no sentiment in America to go to war on Ukraine's behalf, but clearly, you know, a desire to push back a little bit on Russia here. Okay, we also have the Biden administration. They're seeking to reenter the Iran nuclear deal under Obama. Iran doubling down with plans to enrich uranium to its highest levels ever after Israel blamed for blowing up the underground Natanz nuclear uh, facility in Iran. The same day the Pentagon chief was showing up. What's the message to Iran here and to uh, the U.S. from Israel on this? And, and is, uh, what do you think of the Biden administration's moves here? Right. Israel is basically trying to out counteract a, pro a signal of profound weakness from Washington to Iran. Uh, a very interesting cyber attack. Israel has not denied that it did this. The Pentagon has said that it was not involved, which is very unusual. The Pentagon usually would just keep quiet, and it disrupted centrifuges, which enrich uranium at Natanz. Um, so that's in stark contrast to the Biden yeah. administration, which seems determined, determined to rejoin that flawed 2015 deal. Got it. Next up, Afghanistan. Biden is continuing Trump's policy of ending the forever war in Afghanistan. Troops out by the 20th anniversary of 9-11. Senator Lindsey Graham doesn't like this plan. Watch Senator Lindsey Graham with Sean Hannity last night. Watch. Afghanistan is going to deteriorate pretty rapidly. Al-Qaeda and ISIS are going to come back. He's paving the way for another 9-11. I think Joe Biden on foreign policy has been completely incompetent and destabilizing. What he's done with the Iranians is a threat to everything we've accomplished in the Mideast. I just hope and pray that I'm wrong. But I know what was going to, I knew what was going to happen in Iraq. Afghanistan is going to be worse. So, but this is a Trump policy. What do you say to this? Yeah, well, you know, Lindsey Graham and his sidekick in the House, Liz Cheney, have just never met a war they didn't like. It's ludicrous to think that 3,500 U.S. troops with limited capabilities are really what's keeping the Taliban and al-Qaeda at bay. We've been there 20 years. I think we've made our point pretty clear to everyone in Afghanistan that if they host a terrorist group that attacks the United States, it will cause problems for us. Our mandate was never to go and turn the place into Beverly Hills. Our mandate was to kill al-Qaeda and then kill people, uh, you know, to put an end to the people who supported al-Qaeda which has been accomplished. So, you yeah. know, it's continuing a Trump policy, although it's delaying it. We were supposed to be able by May 1st. Biden has delayed that to September. So he sort of owns it now. Got but it. I don't think you'll see the end or a fall of Saigon situation in Kabul. All right. Christian Whiten, thanks for joining us.